Okay, I can tell I'm still under the weather. This is my third attempt at the video. Uh, first time I talked for about five minutes before I realized I had headphones plugged in, but not in the sound near my voice, so there was no sound. So I stopped the video, deleted it, started again, made the same mistake. So this time I've actually got sound. And I was listening to Book Time with Elvis, one of my favorite channels, uh, with Mark, and he was talking about his uh, April into November, I think exactly it's called, that he and his co-hosts are doing, which is a very fun challenge. I want to be involved as much as I can. I want to do as many of the prompts as I can. But I have my other rule, which is my 100 book challenge, which is what I'm really trying to do, is just not download any more books, even free ones. I'm just reading what's on my Kindle and uh, what's on my library holds list. So I go searching because many times I have so much crap on this Kindle. I mean, so many old gems on this Kindle that a lot of times I have, I have what's 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 coming. So I was hoping I, I would have H. Ryder Haggard's She, which they're going to read, but I don't. I do have Captain Blood, so I'm going to read that as a novel instead. Mark mentioned a story by Conan Doyle, which I wrote the name of somewhere, but unfortunately I don't have that one either, so I won't be reading that. Uh, sounds like a really good story, though. There was a story that I read that some of the folks read there that was suggested by one of the other hosts. And I didn't make notes because I thought I was just going to get through this really fast. It's... Linolin, I can't remember the name. Linolin versus the ants. Uh, a great story. They discussed it a lot on Mark's uh, on Mark's week one overview of the adventure prompt. Is I'll link to that video too. Boy, I'm making a lot of promises here about what I'm going to link to, aren't I? So I didn't find any of those stories. So I thought, well, maybe I've got something on there I I can read. So I was just googling. I mean, I was just putting in random searches like adventure and. And I thought, well, I must have at least the most famous adventure story, what I would call the most famous adventure story of all time, and maybe it isn't, but it's what I think of when I think of that genre of pulp adventure as opposed to, like, say, science fiction or fantasy, or whatever, and, and that is the most dangerous game. But I've read that a few times anyway, so I don't really need to be reading that. What I found instead was all these... Mega packs. Don't know if people are familiar with these. If you're if you're a Kindle nerd, you might be. These look out of focus, but maybe it's because I don't have my glasses on. These are from Wildside Press. They're mostly public domain stories, very old pulp stories, and they're ninety nine cents. Sometimes they're 59 cents, sometimes they're 49 cents, some are 29 cents. And whenever I see them come up, and this is one of the reasons that I had to put myself on the 100 book challenge is because I would constantly buy these things. And I've even read like maybe three of them. Uh, in the corner here, Kothar the Barbarian by Gardner F. Fox. Uh, very well known among booktubers that I follow as the creator of the or the main writer of the Silver Age Flash and Green Lantern I think as well yes definitely and the creator of the Justice League of America also tons and tons of novels quickie novels he did a couple of Barbarian series a couple of uh, you know Robert Howard inspired uh, sword and sorcery series bunch of kind of sexy exploitation driven J James Bond era things like the the lady from lust was one I read a couple of lust is, stands for is some organization like specter I guess or you know it's like L period U period S period T period lust and she's a female James Bond kind of person you know they're a mixed bag but they're really fun the titles are more fun than anything so I've got tons of these things Here's when I actually read the whole Mega Pack, the Pulp Fiction Mega Pack, not 
politically correct. You have been warned. 25 classic pulp stories. A classic there is a um, misnomer, and I'll go, why, uh, go into why in a minute. Anyway, apes, sex fiends, gangsters, mad scientists, tentacles. This mega pack has it all, including, as you can see here, an orangutan hanging from a zeppelin fighting a, um, somebody dressed as, e as either like a pilot or an arctic explorer. I don't particularly remember this story. Here we go. Bride of the Ape, Blood Bait for Hungry Mermaids, Ship of the Golden Ghoul, Black Pool for Hell Maidens, The Scalpel of Doom, Satan Drives the Bus by Wyatt Blasingham. When Super Apes, Apes Plot by Anthony Wilder. So there's two different Super Ape ones in here, so that could... Uh, oh, Bride of the... Oh, no, I think I said that. The Dogs of Purgatory. At the bottom here, there is actually a, a, a pretty well-known uh, pulp author, Hubie Cave. The Floating Island of Madness. The Ape, the Ape Man of Jaloxti. Okay. Oh, here we go. The Terrible Tentacles of L472 by Sewell Peasley Wright. Sewell Peasley Wright. The well-known Sewell Peasley Wright who... What I love about this book, and there's a little note in the beginning, is they basically picked all these stories. Most, most of the other mega packs, they, they you know, they, they try and pick quality stories. On this one, they decided to pick 25 stories that they could find with the most ridiculous names. Mistress of Snarling Death, and this I found a very enlightening collection because it, it becomes, after a while, it becomes. Uh, easy to think of everything in the past as being fantastic and everything in the present as being mediocre. You see this when people talk about the music of their era, whatever era it is. You know, old boomers like me are saying, well, music sucks today. It wasn't great. You know, when I was a kid, it was all Jimi Hendrix when really it was like who wears short shorts and stuff like that was what was on the radio. So... I really enjoy it because there's, and if you're interested in writing, it's sometimes great to read, not to be snotty about it, but second-rate work. I mean, there are some stories in here that that are really, you know, there's there's a lot of Island of Dr. Moreau ripoffs. There's a lot of, like, a, a guy is just fishing in a swamp and sees uh, a bunch of swarthy foreigners or something like that um, abducting a half uh, naked woman who's somehow in the swamp for some re a reason too and so of course he wants to rescue her and he goes along and I don't even remember which story this is but it is one of them you know follows her to this this mad scientist place where he's where the mad scientist is playing to do some experiment on her and so for every Robert Howard, there's like a hundred of these people. For every Re Lovecraft, there's a hundred of these people. Uh, there's a really silly story about maybe, oh, oh, fiance, fiancés for the devil's daughter. And that story by, by uh, Russell Gray starts out as one completely sort of set up and just about halfway through I think he ran out of energy or he decided it wasn't going to work out it seems like he just switched it to a different kind of story so these are these are filler this is stuff that you know this is probably more of stuff of what people think all the popes were like you know there's real there's some of the greatest writers of in American history have been pulp writers Hammett Chandler Lovecraft Clark Ashton Smith, Lee Brackett, you know, just goes on and on. Howard, of course. Um, but these are really fun to read. And so I realized I had that on here and I thought, I'm not going to read any of these again. But I am going to find something in here. I know I'm going to find some kind of short story in here to read that's going to qualify as a mystery. 
there's oh I have the bullet okay I read those I want to read I want to read those Co-Feather Barbarian Mega Packs again um Sea Stories Mega Pack that might be oh oh here's a Conan Doyle one the little square box all aboard to the captain aboard sir well, that's promising that might be a, a adventure story so I don't know what I'm going to end up reading for my adventure story I'm confident I'll find something in here oh here we go this has got to be it the jungle story mega pack Otis Albert Klein Otis Adelbert Klein who was I believe he was also a literary agent as as uh, as well as being known as like the world's biggest Co uh, Burroughs ripoff guy. He, he wrote his own Mars series. Um, but I kind of want to read a, a, a short one, the call, the call of the savage by Otis Edelbert Klein. I always thought it was Albert. I think this is probably a novel. Also published as Jan of the Jungle. So let me guess who this uh, character is inspired by. That's all I wanted to say. I want to talk about that and what I'm going to do for adventures. Uh, I can't read the H. Ryder Haggard story because I don't have uh, she. They're doing she as a gr uh, group read, and I do want to stick to just reading stuff on my Kindle, or I'm never going to get through this 100-book challenge if I keep downloading more free stuff. Uh, also, they're talking about watching a movie. I believe Marcus, Marcus said he's going to watch The Man Who Would Be King, which is a great movie. I don't know if he's seen it before. I think he probably has. I haven't... Let's see if I can find that Kipling story. I don't think I've read The Man Who Would Be King. I've definitely seen the movie, and I probably... If I do find the story, that would be a good one to read. But... I don't think I have Kipling on here. Uh, nope. No Kipling. No free Kipling on my Kindle. I have a feeling it's probably a kind of story I would read and, get, and be convinced I haven't read it and then I would start reading it and uh, realize, oh, of course I've read this. So I will find something to read for adventure. I want to f pick something cool that, that, uh, that no one's thought about in a long time and that is not is not science fiction or fantasy. I mean, I, I know that a lot of science fiction and fantasy obviously is adventure fiction, and I'm sure I could find like a Lee Brackett story or a, or you know, a Harry Harrison story or, or something that definitely qualifies as adventure, a Jack Vance story or something, anything, but I've got all these. Anyway. Talk to you later.